Andrew's Workshop Projects Part 13, annealing a length of copper tubing which has work hardened owing to overbending it. Working on the design of a steam turret for the boiler plant which will also have a displacement lubricator and steam whistle fitted. In the darker recesses of Andrew's workshop is a very small brazing hearth, ideal for annealing pipe and silver soldering. I originally fitted this pipe to the boiler plant, but Andrew decided to introduce the burner at the wrong end. Andrew had to subsequently re-bend the pipe from the hand pump to the check valve, and now it won't bend any more because it's work hardened. After the annealing process, I will re-bend the pipe, avoiding the methylated spirit tank, which is now in the way. Over now to some workshop live audio. You don't necessarily need to quench it. You can just let the air cool if you wish. Generally, it gets rid of the scale. Have you got any water? Ah. Uh -huh. Now we have a piece of copper piping that is annealed because the other piece got really mangled as it was put together. So what we'll do is fit it in place again and this time try and make it look better. There was some Loctite on that. Yeah, it doesn't matter, it doesn't need it. It's a good idea when you're straightening pipes to get it approximately straight. I bought some pretend Scotch Bright off eBay. Pretend? Yeah, it's on a roll. All oh, right. And it's thicker than this and it's really bad. It's amazing stuff really. Isn't yeah, it, it is. What it is. I was really quite fearful of doing piping, but now I'm getting into it and I'm still on the baby steps. I really do enjoy doing the piping. Once you've got your head round what size unions to use, it's it's a delight. Yeah, it's not perfect, it wants a little bit more tweaking, but it's okay. It's, it's fine. Near enough for rock and roll. We're now in a bit of a CAD design on where to put the steam turret. Not to be confused with computer-aided design, this is with a K and an A. So we need a turret that needs to be long enough. Take three taps, take a displacement lubricator. This paper's wet. Making it more difficult. Work with what you got, Keith. Yeah, true. Right, so put your displacement lubricator on the end of the turret. At this other end, put a, an elbow. Not to scale. This is an elbow. That fits on there. Make it so you can rotate the tap. So the side of the boiler is here. So I've got to make it enough space out there. Yeah, let's just do the boiler side. So if we do, we do it a smaller scale. Yes. So we've just got to determine how far away from the side of it. Quite close. When you drill the three holes in the turret for the taps, you can actually rotate them against each other. Because I saw you went, you made your first mine one were very too, close together. too close together. Yeah. It's really important not to cheapskate on silver solder. You see it on online auctions. Some of it's good, some of it's not so good. A quick word about silver solder. I do mention it on all my videos about silver soldering, but uh, people ask me anyway, what silver solder should I use? Well, there was a time when we all used Easy Flow, but then it became banned because I think it had cadmium in it. And the stuff we now use is called Silver Flow 55. That's what I get from Blackgates. There are other silver solders available. I got some recently from the USA and it's a higher silver content and I'm hoping that's going to help the flow rate when I try and fix that sweet pea boiler. But flux is important, there are two fluxes. One of them is easy flow number two that's the generic flux and it's perfect for everything copper and brass. If you're silver soldering steel I recommend tenacity flux. These are available from my friends at Blackgates Engineering. It's a usual plug. I don't have any financial things with them at all. What the hell's that? This is a creation my wife made. Andrew's wife is an artist. This is something she made. That's, uh, that's quite novel. It's, it's bigger than an action man. But I mean, the ginger hair is a bit scary. My second wife had ginger hair and it was beautiful when she was younger. Then she started straightening it, and now she looks like a shrunken head. God fucking that. <laughs> you fucking nutter! Your brain works very quickly, and it's this is a just a comment from watching some of your videos. Is that you miss things out? 
for the beginners. You know this. And it's kind of like... Uh, take three. Action. This is just an observation, Keith. But I'd just like to say that sometimes you skip ahead rather quickly for us mere beginners. Um, and I need you to just slow down and fill the gaps in for me. The problem is, I make a video every morning, and some mornings I'm quite sleepy, I'm sort of not fully conscious, that's when I make mistakes. Originally I didn't want to give everything away because I was criticised by some viewers saying, why oh, are you giving all the secrets away, what's all this about? Ah. But I really wanted to, so in the early videos, they're slightly different to the more recent ones. Coming back to the fully conscious bit, when does that happen? Well, I generally wake up about half past six and I refuse to get up when it's dark. So in summer it's different to winter. Uh, I go into the computer room, check the data from the day before, then I make a cup of tea, then I start the video. You know I said to you, filling gaps in. Now you're taking it to the extreme, aren't you? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> anyway. Let's and get... then I go to the toilet. <laughs> let's, let's get back to... Currently, as we're doing this, there are about 2,600, maybe more, 2,800 videos on YouTube. YouTube says there are 2,500 and odd, but there are more than that. If you're a Patreon supporter, quick plug for Patreon. That's about it for this video. The phone rang, and while Andrew was on the phone, I thought I would take some video footage of the internal combustion engine that he's making. This is really beautifully made. Will Andrew ever assemble it? Will it ever run? I really don't know. It's a four-cylinder, four-stroke engine, and the entire thing has many very complex moving parts. Here are the valves that fit in the cylinder heads. This engine is not very large. Have a look at the previous clip, where for scale purposes I show my fingers rotating the crankshaft. When I look at this, I find it hard to believe that Andrew is not an experienced machinist. I think he's only been doing it for a couple of years. That's it for this episode. Stay safe, stay healthy. Thanks for watching, and I hope you found it useful. Please take the time to visit my Mainsteam Models website and click on the section of the website that says Video Playlists. And by doing that, you can find other videos that you may like to watch. And by using the playlists, you can actually watch the videos back to back.